Hey, this is Colton, Gamer Handle Silicus, and today I'm reviewing High Points Rocket Raid 2720 SGL. As you can see, it has lots of data specs, leaving nothing to imagination anywhere. Anyway, open the box. It comes with standard box. Inside is the card and the static bag. I've already taken it out and put it into a system for testing and a bracket. That's it. No cables, no documentation, nothing of that sort. Just a card in the box. Now, for the, what makes High Point interesting is that it's relatively new to the market and uh, it's a lot cheaper. And when you have LSI and Intel, which cards generally start around like six and seven hundred dollars just for entries, this at one hundred and thirty to one hundred and fifty dollars is quite nice. Um, it allows you to have a true SATA 3 input for uh, your X58 boards, which is nice. Um, now, one thing to know is that if you do buy this card, it's SAS, meaning that your SATA drives will not directly connect to it, so you have to buy a cable, a SAS cable. It usually has uh, one end that's, that's a little bit thicker. It attaches into the card and fans out into, one I have, fans out into four, and you can attach those mini drives to it. It has two spots for that, so you can have two different slots. It's got a uh, maximum of four gigabytes a second. One of the things that I want to try to express to people when I explain to them about, interesting, that there are cheaper rays in this that are around $34, but they only take up a X1 slot instead of an X8 PCI slot. The problem with an X1 is that you can only get around 300 or so um, gigabits a second. So, you know, when you have a, uh, a true SATA 3 card, such as one of these, drive, excuse me, you don't get the full performance out of if you had something that was on an X8 or an X16. So whenever you look to buy a RAID card and you want to put a SATA 3 and you actually want to run it close to the specs, you need to have a lane that's able to be devoted to it. So with that being said, for 134 odd dollars, I think is what I paid for this, you can... Uh, get all those options. Some of the things, the downsides to it is that uh, a lot of the inside when actually you have setting up the functions to the RAID, it doesn't, uh, obviously Windows doesn't automatically um, figure that out, so you have to download the drives from their website, put it onto like a flash or a CD key, and during Windows you've got to install the drive so it can find this to install it. So make sure you do that if you're confused if you buy one of these and you're like oh windows doesn't recognize that i have no drives and that you have them attached that's one of the biggest things to do is get yourself a this happens to be a rift one uh... usb key and uh... just uh... download it from there and install the drives um, the actual software itself is pretty weak it uh... doesn't really have many much in the line of options um, it's uh... pretty much uh... your basic you know put your things in a raid it doesn't even give you an option for striping, like how big of a size you want, 64, 128, 512, whatever you want it to be. It gives you one, and that's it. You're stuck. But once again, for 130 bucks, it's really hard to complain. It gives you pretty good performance. Um, these are with two Force 3 SATA 3 drives from Corsair. As you can see, the scores are pretty good. Uh, the write speed is phenomenal. Um, each test is a little different as far as what scores I've gotten. Here I almost have uh, from SIFS software Sandra we have uh, almost 800 megabytes a second and then I only have 619 from Crystal and uh, down here I have 758 from HD Tune. So overall it seems that I get around 800 read and 800 write depending on your averages. Overall, extreme performance. Not quite uh, 550 times 2, but you always have degradation the more you add. However, I assume that uh, this RAID card doesn't give as good a performance read-wise as some of the onboard Intel from some of the newer uh, P55 generations. So, until Intel comes out with its newest uh, RAID controller we're probably not going to see trim for a while so yes you're going to get degradation but as long as you uh, secure erase it every once in a while and break your raid clean it up you should be getting some crazy performance 
Uh, as you can see, it's really ridiculously fast. You can literally launch anything you'd like. Anyway, uh, small comparison. Here's a breakdown of two drives, SATA two drives. I have it on another machine set up. You can see that you get quite a bit of bonus, especially in write speed, using this. Once again, the ones you're looking at now are SATA two, two drives together. That being said, that's a small overview of the High Point 2720 SGL. If you want RAID performance on an X58 platform, or you want better ride speeds than what generally you'll get from a P55 board, this may be the way to go. To cap on it, price point, great. No manuals, problem not very much options when it comes to setting it, setting up your RAID. You set it, you forget it. One last thing I want to note, if you want to put it into sleep or hibernate, generally it'll just crash out or gray out. So if you're going to get this card, know that you're going to, have to shut down your machine or leave it on all the time. It's one of the drawbacks, I assume, but I leave my PC on all the time, so it's not much of an issue. Anyway, that's to wrap it up. This is Colton, Gamer Handle Silicus. If you got any questions, let me